Thank you. I'm, I'm not actually going to present an overview because um, my field is not chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you because um, what I have discovered is a mechanism um, that these lytic RNA viruses can persist for long periods of time um, in various tissues of human beings. Um, I will just give a short recap on um, some of the things that are known about enterovirus uh, um, infection and chronic fatigue, but Dr. Chia will probably tell you a good deal more um, <coughs> after I'm done. Um, there has been enteroviral RNA protein and in infectious particles isolated from cases of chronic fatigue, um, and it shares the characteristic seen in persistent enterovirus infections that um, these positive strand RNA genomes, these genomes, these viruses normally have um, much more of the genomic RNA, which also serves as the mRNA present, than the negative anti-genome. Um, but in cases of chronic fatigue isolation of enterovirus, they detect um, negative strand RNA at a much greater level. Also, in, um, in, in some cases when they have isolated virus from intact in vivo samples and culture them, they don't always find cytopathic enterovirus, another characteristic of persistent enterovirus infection. My own work has been done largely on human myocarditis and cardiomyopathy, um, also using the mouse model of this disease. Similarly to chronic fatigue syndrome, um, entero enterovirus RNA is not the only cause. Um, it, the um, frequency of its isolation or detection in cases varies a good deal. 20 to 25 percent is a frequently given uh, percentage, but it varies from study to study. It's extremely rare to isolate infectious virus from adult hearts. Um, even when enteroviral RNA is present in those hearts, if you do classical cytopathic assays for the virus, you don't detect it. Um, and again, enterovirus RNA in cardiac tissues and in skeletal muscle has been shown to have a predominance of the anti-genome uh, negative strand RNA at greater levels than are seen in lytic infections. And this is odd because these viruses replicate in the cytoplasm of the cells. Um, they, they tend to have um, a, a predominance of the positive strand genomic RNA produced, and they get out of the cells by actually lysing the cells after infectious particles are generated. In our own studies, we replicated um, a finding that a lot of people had with the murine model of Coxsackie virus B3 myocarditis, or it's the, the model for enterovirus myocarditis, um, in that <coughs> you could find um, at, whoops, at, at day four, day eight, day 14, and day 21 after the mice had been inoculated with the Coxsackie virus B3, um, you can find that their hearts, when passed in culture, uh, produced a high amount of cytopathic effect. But when you went out to the chronic myocarditis stage, um, day 28 <coughs> and longer, you don't find any cytopathic effect in those cultures. However, if you test these cultures of heart homogenates, you find that enteroviral RNA is present um, during the chronic stage, even though it's not killing the cells in culture. And again, that was an unexpected finding. Um, this was found also in cases of polymyositis as well as um, um, chronic myocarditis. When we looked at these cultures, we, oh, sorry, we found that when you looked at um, RT-PCR using primers that are specific for the very five prime terminus of the positive strand, you d did not detect any um, signal in the later stage chronic myocarditis samples, um, <clears throat> although you could detect a signal um, at, in the wild type virus and at day 14, and you always got a signal with primers that were further inset into the, into the viral genome, indicating that the defect in these genomes was actually at the very five prime end of the genome. And the reason this was unexpected is that these viruses have a very important structure in this part of their genome. Um, it wasn't totally unexpected that you could get such a, a mutation in that um, this just results from, this just results from um, premature termination 
of the anti-genome transcription. Uh, and it's a relatively common mutation, one would expect. However, these viruses would normally be eliminated very quickly because the wild-type virus replicates so much better. The reason for that is that this region, if you look at it in poliovirus, um, deletions of this region of the negative strand, which corresponds to the five prime terminal deletions, result in a very big change in the ratio of positive to negative strand RNA, remembering that the positive strand is actually the genome and is necessary both for viral protein production and for infectious virion. Uh, <clears throat> there is a factor that actually binds to the part of the genome that is deleted in these defective enteroviruses, um, heterogeneous ribonucleoprotein C, um, which is required for efficient positive strand RNA synthesis. The deletions that we found in the mouse ranged in size in this cloverleaf structure from only seven nucleotides to 49 nucleotides. Um, all, we've never found a deletion that was bigger um, than 49 nucleotides. This particular stem loop structure in the RNA um, genome seems to be necessary for replication even in the defective virus. However, the, although these viruses are defective and produce much less positive strand viral RNA, they do produce viral proteins. And we have not found any defects in the genome um, in the open reading frame in the viral proteins. Um, if you look at six hours in the wild-type virus, you see a nice detection of viral protein um, when you can't see anything in the defective viruses. If you go out for um, four times as long, um, you can't see anything with the wild-type virus because all the cells are long since lysed. But in the defective cultures where you don't see cytopathic effect, you are seeing viral proteins. Okay, these viruses, although defective, are also encapsidating inf infectious particles, and um, we've been able to show that because you can actually prevent infection um, by these um, terminally deleted defective viruses using um, Coxsackie virus B3 neutralizing antibody. They also do a very unusual thing for this type of virus. They encapsidate the antigenome um, nearly as well as the genome, um, that also reduces the overall infectivity of these viruses. But it also um, results in a nearly equal amount of positive and negative strand RNA. So our findings in mice indicated that um, you could have these type of deletions, and they accounted for the persistent virus in the mice. Um, they replicated very slowly and were not cytopathic in culture. They do generate viral proteins, and you have a, a change in the ratio of the positive and negative strands. A very interesting finding was that if you inoculated mice with these very defective vi viruses, IP, it would go to the heart and persist for up to five months. That, <clears throat> and when you generally generate TDs in these mice by inoculation of wild-type virus, um, the persistent infection is seen in the um, immunocompetent mice despite their having a strong anti-CDB3 immunity. We also found this in human beings. This was a fortuitous case. Um, we were very lucky to get, um, have a collaboration with Dr. Oka in Japan, who had a case of fulminant myocarditis. Um, the reason that this was lucky for us was that this particular individual had an extremely high titer of virus in his heart. Um, however, um, he sent us large chunks of formalin fixed tissue, and we were able to show that despite the fact that this patient d died only um, 14 days after admission to the hospital, he already had no wild-type virus at the five prime end. It was all terminally deleted. So he had already progressed to a de defective virus despite the fact that um, this was a case of fulminant myocarditis. And we found um, that we could detect the same type of deletions in the same region in this human case. Um, we were pleased to find that this, uh, that this was um, a modern CBB2 strain. Um, it, in fact, was close, had a closest relationship to a CBB2 um, circulating in the same year in the same region of Japan. Um, and um, shared, we weren't able to go beyond a third of the genome from this formal and fixed tissue, but we were able to show that it was indeed a Coxsackie virus B2. Um, this also showed us that you didn't have to be um, a, um, 
a prototype enterovirus strain that has been studied in the laboratory, modern um, Coxsackie B2, also already had gone to terminal deletion within 14 days. So a very similar finding. <coughs> However, we've now found that you can generate this type of terminal deletion not only with Coxsackie virus B3, but with other human enteroviruses um, using primary cultures of pancreatic and cardiac cells. Um, what we did was to generate um, primary cultures of, of cells from the pancreas and from heart um, in both mice and humans and um, grow those cultures up when you passage our viral strain of CVB3 and other um, human enterovirus Bs in these cultures, you end up with the same terminal deletion. Um, this does not happen when you passage these viruses in human HeLa, and in this case, a, a immortalized um, murine cardiomyocyte-like um, line called HL1. The difference about these cultures from the standard cultures that are used for enterovirus detection are these are cult cultures are contact inhibited. When you grow them to confluence, they stop dividing. We also found that these, um, if you put in a um, terminally deleted defective virus with a short deletion, um, you end up selecting larger deletions in these cultures. And that replicated what we found in the mouse, inoculated with a Coxsackie virus B3 defective virus, that in the heart it became um, larger during that five-month persistence. Okay, when you looked at these um, viruses in these cultures, you found that not only did you have in serial passage the loss of the very five prime end, although the virus remained in replicating in the passages, um, cytopathic effect was lost um, during this period of, of passage, but you also found the change to um, generation of high levels of the negative strand anti-genome in those cultures as well, um, indicating that this is very similar to what is happening in human tissues with persistent enterovirus infection. Um, we have been looking at the mechanism for this selection, <coughs> and we were drawn to the fact that um, Dr. Semler and Dr. Flanagan had shown that this region of the enterovirus genome, they were working with polio, um, oops, uh, binds um, the HNRNPC um, at the minus strand at the part of the genome that's actually deleted. This is a very common factor in human and murine cells. Um, it's a nuclear factor, and it only is present in the cytoplasm um, during mitosis. When we looked at whole cells of our HeLa's and cardiac cultures, you can see that we could detect um, this band across the board, but when we went to cytoplasmic extract, it took a very long exposure to begin seeing it in the cardiac um, cells, although it was present at high levels in the HeLa cells. And I assume that this essential factor is basically limiting the ability of the virus to replicate in the wild-type form. Um, so to summarize, we know that these viruses have um, unique aspects, but ones that are very consistent with the kind of persistence that Dr. Chia is going to talk about. Um, they are defective viruses, um, but they still produce um, all the viral proteins, including ones that have been known in the heart, to affect the contractility of the cardiomyocyte. What they do in other cells, we don't know. Um, the interesting things that we found was not only that it accounted for the what we saw, but you could see that they don't quickly kill infected cells. So you have an opportunity to have effects upon immune signaling and cellular function that you would not see normally. Um, this, <coughs> they also persist um, in the presence of an active immune response for a very long period of time. Um, because they are um, <coughs> defective viruses um, and because they occur basically in quiescent or differentiated cells, um, we, th we think that they may occur in a variety of different tissues, but it probably requires a high acute infection to actually seed those um, quiescent cells with enterovirus in order to have the selection of these viruses. I also wanted to thank my collaborator, Stephen Tracy, who began all this work and is now working in type 1 diabetes, Dr. Kim Soo Kim, who did a lot of the early RT-PCR work um, and developed it, Dr. Taprich, who is looking at the 5' prime NTR structure with me now, um, Dr. Drescher who, at Creighton University, who's working on a TMEV model, and of course, Dr. Oka, who was very kind to give us the tissue. Thank you.